guys, and good morning. Uh, I just wanted to welcome you guys to Promised Land, uh, and it's the best time of the week. You already know what time it is. It is time for worship. And so, as we are all, I'm sure, so excited at home uh, to ready and to get ready to worship our God, we just want to open up with a word from the Bible, and it comes from Philippians chapter two, verses four through eight. This is what it says. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Let's pray. Father, we want to highlight and remember your humble character. We want to remind ourselves of the way you treated us, that even though you were a king, you didn't count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but you loved us by coming to us as we are. As, uh, as a humans living in a broken world, you came to us as a human, God, to be with us, to walk with us, to laugh and cry with us, God. God, you see each and every one of your children. You've seen their good times and their bad times, and you are with us through all of it, and you are still with us through all of it. Lord, even, uh, even though uh, we may stumble and fall, Father, your love never fails. And so you went so far as to give your own life for us to save our lives. May we remember your love and may we remember uh, to always rejoice in you. We thank you so much for your love for us. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Hi, boys and girls. It's so good to see you. Happy Sunday. Um, this morning, I well, this afternoon. I don't know when you're viewing this. Um, so as we worship together, remember the phrase that we used to say to each other? And we're going to repeat it. I cannot hear you, but I'm hoping you're saying it. God is good. When I say God is good, you say all the time. When I say all the time, you say God is good. And we're going to start with that this morning because I think there's so much happening in our life right now that many times we forget. Even though we say God is good, do you really believe God is good all the time, right? So I think we really need that reminder this morning as we worship, as we come before God to open our heart to listen to his word, okay? So God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Let's do that one more time. God is good. All the, time. All the time, God is good. Amen. Right? So let's stand up and let's sing this together.
Let's all confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 through 2 Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for everything you have done for us. Forgive us for our sins and help us to believe and understand you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, it is time now for our message today, and before we go any further, uh, we just want to thank our friend for having read our passage for us. It comes from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. Now, you might notice that Ephesians is at all the way towards like the end of the Bible, right? So uh, we're actually going to take a break from Gospel Project today. And we're taking a break from the Old Testament today because today we want to talk about something I think is really important for all of us, right? Like no matter how young we are, no matter how old we are, this topic is really important. And it's something that I'm sure you guys also have questions about too. It's what does a Christian do, right? What am I supposed to do as a Christian, Because, you know, no matter how old we are, no matter how young we are, and really, these are questions that even some of our parents may have, some of our our teachers may have, all these sorts of, all these people have these same sorts of questions, right? Like, uh, if I'm a Christian, does it mean that I just go to church and that's it? Or if I'm a Christian, does it mean that I go to church, or in this case, I watch the YouTube videos and the YouTube services, um, and then I am like a nice person? Like that's what a Christian is, right? Maybe some of you guys are nodding your heads like, oh yeah, yeah, that is what a Christian is. I go to church and I'm supposed to be a nice person, right? And you know, like if we look at the world right now, Uh, with all the news going around, not even in the United States, but like globally, we can see that we're still having to deal with COVID. We're still having to deal with a lot of other issues that you are aware of and that I'm aware of. Uh, and, And we all are trying to think, and we're all just thinking to ourselves and to each other, the world would be a better place if there were just nice people, right? Like, that's what this world needs, nice people. And maybe some of you guys are nodding your heads, right? Like, and you know what? I'm not going to lie. Like, of course, I I want more nice people in this world too. But here's the thing. (sighs) Nice people are great, but this world needs just something more. This world needs, can you guys guess? His name starts with a J, ends with an Jesus. This world needs Jesus. And so, guys, yeah, nice people are are a good thing. Yeah, I'm hoping for more nice people in the world too. But if we look to what the Bible is telling us, and if we look to what we really, really need in my life and your lives and really everyone's life is in the world, it's that we need Jesus. And that's where Christians come in. You see, Christians are supposed to tell people about Jesus. Jesus' last commandment to us even was to go out to the ends of the earth and tell people about Jesus. And so uh, here's the thing that I'm going to ask us to follow along with, right? Because today, the main idea that I'm hoping that we all follow along with is that we walk in love. 
that we walk in love. That's the main idea for today's passage and for today's message for us today. Because as Christians, we are called to walk in love. As Christians, or what a Christian does, is that we walk in love. And we're going to see what that means. We're going to unpack what that means. But first of all, before we even see and before we even learn what it means to walk in love, we got to know something first. We have to know what love actually is, okay? And so uh, we want to turn to me, or turn with me back to verse 2, okay? We're going to go out of order for a second. Verse 2 of our passage, and it says this, and walk in love as Christ gave us, loved us, and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God, okay? So when you see this word love, we know that God is telling us to walk in love as Christ loved us. But what exactly is love? Maybe uh, we have this idea where love is like just a feeling, right? Like I can say, I love pizza, Or uh, maybe you can say, oh, I love being at home. Or I love going to school. Or you could say, oh, I loved that movie. You know, something like that, right? Or maybe we can go just a little bit deeper than that and say, oh, I love my family. Or maybe love for some of us is like that weird, ooey-gooey feeling that we feel when we see someone at school that we think is like a little bit pretty, right? Or that we have like a crush on, right? I'm sure some of you guys already know what that feels like, right? And so is that what love is? (laughs) Is that exactly what love is? I'm not too sure, but we got to look to the Bible to see what love is. And when we see the Bible and we learn what love actually is, we see how God loves us, okay? And see, love is not just a feeling. Love is an action. You know, if God came to us, Promised Land Ministry, and he said, oh, Promised Land Ministry, I love you guys. Right? And that's all he did, right? Like, that was even like an awkward silence for some of you guys, right? Like, why isn't he speaking? If God only said that and stopped at that and did nothing else, I'm going to be honest here. I would say that I would even be a little upset, right? Like, I would say to God, God, it's great that you love us, but God, don't you know what's going on in the world? Don't you know we're in a pandemic still? Don't you know the numbers and cases are still rising? Don't you know people are still fighting? Don't you know people are still angry? Don't you know we need more nice people in the world? God, what's going on? What are you doing about this, God? And we want to know, like, why is God doing this? Or what it did God do this? Or what is God going to do about it, right? So if God just had this feeling of love, right, for us, and that's all he did, I'm sure we would all be a little uh, maybe upset, bothered with what God is doing. But praise God and thank God because his love for you and me is not just a feeling. He actually does something about it. God's love for you and me is shown even through his son, Jesus Christ. Like I said at the beginning of our message today, what this world needs is not just nice people. What this world needs is not just people to do favors for you and me, but what this world desperately, desperately needs is Jesus Christ. And we see how God loves us through Jesus Christ because he gave himself up for us. As our verse says, he gave himself up for us. Now, I want to think about that for a second here. Because when we look to the examples of people around us, right, we could be so uh, flattered, we can be so taken aback in like a good way of how people are so nice, right? Of how, uh, you know, if someone like opens the door for you, you say, oh, thank you. If someone, I don't know, happens to just give you like $5, you know, you say, oh, thank you, that's awesome. 
And in our hearts, we learn to love these people so much more because they're so nice to us, right? But look at Jesus. He doesn't just open the door. He doesn't just give us $5. He gives us his whole life. And no one had to tell him to do that. No one. He did that on his own. In fact, the very reason why Jesus came to this earth, the very reason why Jesus came to this earth was so that he could sacrifice his life for me and for you. When we see that Jesus Christ loves me and loves you and loves this whole world, to the point of even death on a cross, what does that do for you and me? What do we think about that? Because I'm going to be honest here, I don't know too many people in my life that are going to do that for me, right? Like, I, I can't expect even, like, some of my best friends to just go and, and, and die for me, right? Like, that would be such an amazing thing. But I've never seen it before, right? And it's not just that Jesus, you know, is going to come to this earth, and then because he's God, he can die, and like, that's no problem. But what Jesus did was a really stressful thing. We learned that in the Gospels, right? Like, we learned right before, like, I don't know, during, like, Easter, we might hear these messages and these sermons on like Good Friday and how Jesus was really praying really, really hard in this garden called Gethsemane that, that he even started to bleed. He, he was so stressed out that he started to sweat blood, right? So this sacrifice that Jesus made, it's not something that was just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. let me open the door for you. It's not something as easy as that, but it's something that was so stressful, something that was so challenging that you and I, if we were in the same situation, we would have failed. But Jesus himself still goes willingly. He says in that moment in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will be done, but yours, God. Right? He goes to us out of love. He doesn't just say, I love you, promised land. He shows it to us by dying for us. What kind of love is this? He says it's a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. You know, in the Old Testament, um, we've been in the Old Testament for a while now, right? And we've been learning about uh, all the sacrifices they had to make. And how uh, all the Israelites, they had to bring up these sheep and had to bring up these goats. And then uh, other times it was pigeons. Other times it was like grain and other things like that. Uh, and, and so, look, here's the thing. If Jesus was not here, if Jesus did not come, to this day, people would still have to be sacrificing. But because of what Jesus has done for me and for you and for all those whom he loves, for this whole world... We're free from our sacrifices. We're free from our sins. We don't make those sacrifices anymore. But Jesus paid it all for me and for you. I don't know if you guys have watched the movie Finding Nemo, um, but at the beginning of the movie, right, and I'm not talking about Finding Dory. I'm talking about the first one, Finding Nemo. Uh, at the beginning of the movie, we see Marlin, I think that's his name, like Nemo's dad and Nemo's mom. And they're so happy, right? Because they, we see all the little eggs that they've laid and that are going to become mini Nemos, right? Or mini Marlins. And as uh, the movie progresses, like a minute in, we see this giant fish coming out of nowhere. And this fish is hungry. And as Nemo's mom and dad are just rejoicing over all of their future children and being so happy about being parents, all the other fish run away into the coral reef, right? And this other fish that's hungry, this predator fish, is coming closer and closer and closer and sees these eggs. And so at that moment, Nemo's mom knows her children are in danger. At that moment, 
Nemo's mom does not stop and say, oh my gosh, I don't want to be eaten. Let me go run into the coral reef too. But Nemo's mom jumps into the line of action and even tries to save all of her children and sacrifices herself in the midst of it. Right? Like that is a picture of love to me and to you, right? Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest, when I first saw that movie, it's pretty old now, but when I first saw that movie, I was so sad. I saw Nemo's mom literally die before my eyes to save Nemo. That's, what, that's a picture of love. And in this life, in real life, right, we know what love is because Jesus showed us. Because Jesus died for me and died for you. So we know, without a shadow of a doubt, if there's ever a moment in your life, in the future, even now, if you're wondering, God, do you really love me? God, there's a lot of bad things in the world. Are you really good? God, we're, we're in a tough family situation right now. God, what's going on? Are you really a loving God that I can trust? All we need to do is look to Jesus. In those moments in your lives, all we need to do is look to Jesus and see that he did not sacrifice half of his life, a quarter of his life, his whole life. He gave up all of himself for me and for you because he loved us, because he loves all of his children. And so now that we know what this love is, right, it's not just a feeling, it's an action that we know uh, is through Jesus Christ, right? We can see that, and as we believe in that, and as we are changed by that love, then we can start to walk in love, right? That's the main idea of our passage today. Remember, we can start to walk in love, how? By being imitators of God. Turn to verse 1 with me. It says, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. Okay? Now, when you see that word imitate, uh, imitators, what do we, we usually think of? When I first read this verse, when I, what I thought of was how I used to copy my older brother. I used to go where he went. I used to try to talk how he talked. I used to, uh, you know, try to dress how he dressed and all these sorts of things, right? And my older brother, he, he was really annoyed by it, to be honest, right? And if you guys are older siblings at home and your younger siblings try to copy you, uh, you know how it feels, right? You guys will probably agree with my older brother, right? Um, or if you're at school, you'll go and see maybe like someone who's copying everyone. What do you call that person? You, you call them, oh, he's such a copycat. Oh, she's such a copycat. And, but then, and, and we think that being an imitator because of these things is a bad thing. But look, it, the Bible's telling me and he's telling you guys today, being an imitator is actually a really good thing. We all need to be imitators of God. In fact, this word imitator, it, it's, it's like the idea where you're like a mime, right? Like you're literally just mimicking everything God is doing. And so if God is being faithful to you, then God is wanting you to be faithful to him and being faithful to others. If God is being kind to you and being gracious to you and to me, then God wants all of us to be uh, gracious and kind to others. If God sacrificed his time, his effort, even his own blood, sweat, and tears, and God is calling me and he's calling you, all of us as Christians, to imitate that and to follow in God's example. Remember, we're beloved children. That's what the verse says. And so we know that Jesus loves us. We know that Jesus went so far as he died on the cross for us, and it's because of that idea, because of the fact that Jesus actually died and rose again from the grave, that we also can be imitators of that, right? 
So here, here's where the line of thinking is going, okay? Just so to make sure we're all on the same page, okay? God loves me and he loves you. God shows his love for me and you by dying for us on the cross. God saves me and you and because God loves me and because God loves you, he's telling us to be imitators of him. He's telling us, guys, you need to copy me. You need to mimic me. You need to do everything I do. Why? Because as Christians are called, as Christians we are told by God, go tell the world about Jesus Christ. Go walk in love. Go love others as God loved you. In this world, I, you know, Recently, I've been able to talk with some of you guys, uh, whether it's on Saturday uh, devotionals or whether it's even like sometimes I'll do like phone calls, right? And you know, when we share about how we're doing, uh, I, I know that some of you guys are very aware of the things in this world. right? Even uh, to the point where some of you guys are really, really sad about some of the things that are happening in the world right now with people being just outright mean, being outright uh, discriminatory even to other people, right? And uh, I know that some of you guys are even wondering, like, why do people do bad things? Why are we in this situation right now, right? God's answer to me and to you and to the rest of the world is Jesus. What we need is Jesus. We need his love. You see, Jesus' love for me and for you, it's life-changing. And because Jesus loves me, I can love you. Because Jesus loves you, you can love that one kid in your school that you think is annoying. You can love your one sibling, even when your sibling really gets on your nerves, you can still love them. Even when you get angry at your parents for whatever reason, even though we really shouldn't all the time, right, or at all, you know, God loved them and he loves you so you can love them also. I want to end now uh, just with this one short idea, right, because this um, it's, it's a hard thing, right, trying to love other people. Like, how can I love people even though, like, I have a hard time enough trying to be nice to other people, like, trying to hold doors for people, like, uh, you know, doing favors for other people. That's hard enough for me, right? How am I supposed to love them like Jesus loved them? How am I supposed to find that courage, to even tell people about Jesus, which is a really loving thing to do. I want to illustrate it with one story. Uh, back when I was still in school, I had a roommate. Um, and me and my roommate, we would always hang out with the other Korean kids on, in, in our school, right? Uh, except my roommate wasn't Korean. He was a white dude. And this, this white guy, he's never actually, like, um, he's never talked with Asian people all that much, right? Like, to the extent of his exposure to Asian people is basically, like, the one Chinese restaurant in his city, and that's it, right? And so, uh, for him to be roommates with me, for him to be uh, friends with all of the other Korean people on campus, um, it, it was new for him, right? And when we would eat together, we would, you know, whether it's like ramyun late at night or eating uh, even kimchi or something like that or samgyeopsal, whatever we do, like whatever Korean food we ate, what do we use? We use chopsticks, right? Now, my friend, my roommate, uh, he tried his best to use chopsticks. And let me tell you, at the very beginning, uh, when he tried to use chopsticks, it was, it was, I just laughed because it was so hard for him. I'm, I know, I'm a little mean. But, and I would even tell him, like, man, it's okay if you want to use a fork. Do you want me to get you a fork? Right? And he said, no, 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 it's okay. I'm going to use these chopsticks. I'm going to learn. Right? And throughout his time, uh, throughout our time at school, 
we had like three years of living together. And throughout those three years, from beginning all the way to the end, at the very end of it, this guy was a pro at using chopsticks. It was like he was, it's like he's used it all his life, right? Now, why am I sharing this? Like, how does this act like connect at all? Well, my friend at first didn't know how to do it. He didn't know how to use chopsticks whatsoever. But he spent time with me and he spent time with other people who used chopsticks regularly, right? And through him spending time more and more and more with me and all of our other friends, he learned along the way. And it took some time for him, but he still learned. And so if I'm trying to be nice, or if I'm trying to love people, like Jesus loved me, it's hard. In fact, I fail at it a lot of times. But what we can do and what we start to do is that to walk in love, we need to walk with God. To walk in love and to share that love of God with other people, we need to walk in love in love with God. We need to spend our time with God. And so every day, whether it's not we're doing our QTs or we're praying, we spend our time with God and God at the end of the day, and at the end of the day, as God and you spend more time together, you'll change. You'll become more like God. You'll be able to walk in love. So as we close out at this time, remember this, that Jesus loves you to the point of death on the cross. And because of that death, because of his love for me and for you, we can also love other people. We can walk in love. Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you so much for this time. We want to thank you so much for the love that you've given us through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, would you help all of my friends, all of my brothers and sisters here at Promise Line Ministry to understand and to believe in this love that you are a God who uh, came down to us in the form of a human to die uh, the sinner's death, Lord. And we thank you so much that you have done that. And Lord, now we ask and pray, Lord, help us to live out that life as we walk in love as we walk with you, Lord, help us to walk in love with other people. Help us to love other people because you loved us first. We thank you, Lord. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, here are the announcements for the week. We have a good amount of announcements, so keep your ears in check still. Uh, you don't want to miss any of these things, any of these announcements. And so the first announcement, uh, we just want to give a warm welcome to our friend, Mr. Sungho. Would you guys clap with me? Yay! Uh, we just want to thank him for joining our ministry and uh, joining Praise Team and who knows what else we'll, we, we will have in the future but yes we thank mr sungo uh next you, uh, there are no small groups today don't be too excited for that because there's small groups next week but this week no small groups uh sixth graders you guys have discipleship training at 12 30 uh and, and that link is the same link that we are going to use for large group today okay so don't miss that out sixth graders Discipleship training at 12.30. Uh, next, the whole ministry is going to have a large group at 1.30. So sixth graders and everyone else, uh, join us together at 1.30 for large group. It's going to be a good time, I'm sure. Uh, next, uh, oh, lastly, with this uh, discipleship training, uh, just remember to bring your Bibles, guys, and I will see you guys later today at 1230 through the same link as the large group. All right. Have a good rest of your day, guys.